pray with you today. That's part of discipleship. You know, so, but discipleship, the, the key thing is discipleship starts in circles. It's not always done in rows. Converts happen in rows, but discipleship happens in circles. And what I mean by this is when we come to church on Wednesdays and Sundays, it's great because you're being encouraged by the word. You're being encouraged through, you know, through teaching and, and, and being around one another. But it's in the times of, you know, just meeting at one another's homes like we do with journey groups. I love our journey group. And if you guys aren't a part of one, then get a part of one. That's all I got to say because it's when I get to meet, you know, at, with, I mean, Christian and Ashley's or at, um, Glenn and Mandy's, you know, wherever we're at, it's just coming and saying, what's up? You know, the other night I had a paper that was due and I still went to journey group and they all gave me a hard time about it, but it was, I needed some time just to get away and say, hey, this is what's going on. And they encouraged me and I left a little early and went home and praise God got it done. But it was that time of, you just need people around you. Life wasn't meant to be done by myself walking, walking alone, you know. So just doing life with people, that's, it's, that's the simplicity of it. It doesn't always have to be so complicated. Um, it looks like just a journey. So let's uh, Acts 2, the early church. Jesus has already given the Great Commission. Now we're in Acts 2 verse, uh, we can really go to verse 42. And it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine doctrine, and in fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. Then fear came upon every soul and uh, many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Uh, now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Just life, okay? And they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all and as anyone had need. So continually, da- continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So, you know, the, the early church went from the temple into the house. And that's where you see the early church start to explode. And it says that the Lord added to the church daily just because they were what? They were sharing life with one another. Okay, and so it's great. You can, you can invite as many people as you want to church, and people are going to come. Don't invite people to church. But I can almost guarantee that you're going to have more people come over to your house just for some hot dogs on the grill and show up. And it's once you get them in, and you can close the door, <laughs> but, you know, you're going to have people, people are going to be drawn just to, hey, come over and let's do life. You know, I was watching one thing last night, and um, he said, if you come to my house, he said, we're not, we'll pray together, but we're not going to preach. We have preachers that do that. You know, we're not going to maybe worship or sing songs. We have worship leaders that do that, and I don't know, come to the house, we're going to, let's, let's preach to each other, let's worship together, but, you know, whatever, whatever it looks like for you, just get them in, just do life with one another. Um, you know, you, you don't always have to have a person, but that's what I wrote, you don't always have to have someone with you 24-7. It's just a simple call on the phone and, hey, man, what's up? Or the text message after, you know, whatever, just to encourage people. You know, so the underlying key here is is hospitality. And when I started thinking about this, I was like, well, we do this relatively well. But hospitality doesn't really mean what you and I probably are thinking it means right now. And um, this is one of the most expensive items that most of us in this room probably own. It's one of the greatest tools for the kingdom. And that's your home. Your home can be a, a tool for the kingdom. And so we live in a, in a world today where, you know, our, our back decks are bigger than our front porches and our garages. We come home at 4 o'clock and open the garage door, pull your car in, and shut it real fast, you know. Um, but it's, it, it's in the time where I go, hmm, my home, this is a tool for the kingdom. I talk to the Lord all the time, and God, this is what I want my home to look like one day. This is my dream home. If you build it, Lord, they'll come and I, whatever you want it to be like, that's I, it's your home. You know? 
because it's a tool that he's given most of us, or, you know, if you don't, per se, own your home, you live in a home, invite people over. So the gospel, I wrote down, the gospel comes with a house key. Okay? Hospitality, it's ground zero for, for the Christian community. It's where the activity is going to start happening. Okay? Jesus, in Matthew 25, this is how really what Jesus defines hospitality as. He says in 25 verse 34, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Um, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? Or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison? And when did we come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. Hospitality has the stranger in mind. Okay, a, a community, you know, the, the community of the church. You know, Wednesday night crowd, most of us know each other really well. It was, it was kind of hard when Pastor Barry said, go to someone you really don't know, you know. But the hospitality has the stranger in mind. Just going after the one in front of you who you maybe don't know real well. But the amazing thing about the kingdom is you come in a stranger and you leave family real quick. So for people like Pastor Paul in the room that has to have a Greek word in in the message, I'm going to throw this out. Um, The Greek word hospitality is, and I'm going to butcher it, but it's philo and then exenia. It's it's, it's one word, but it has two two roots, F-I-L-O. X-E-N-I-A, for anyone who's writing it down. So in the English culture, it's a willingness, you know what I'm saying, to host and entertain guests. Let's throw some hot dogs on the grill, let's, you know, come over and and just hang out, which is cool, and and yeah, that's, that's not wrong, but the Greek culture, it's broken down, like I said, in two parts. Philo, P H I L O. It's another word for for love, like brotherly love. Okay, this is where we get the word Philadelphia from, the city of brotherly love. Um, But then exenos, E-X, or X-E, X-E-N-O-S, it's the hospitality, the word for strangers, for an immigrant. And then in the Old Testament, it's even used for for the word uh, enemy. So the word really means one who loves the stranger, the ones that aren't like us, like you would your own brother. That's that's the word hospitality. Just to love the person that's that's right there. That doesn't look like me, smell like me, act like me. Just go after the person in front of you. You know, people will forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. We've, We've heard that. And so I started thinking about this. I mean, there are times where I love the message that pastor preaches, but I've gotten in my car and I take home a few points. But I remember the person that sent me the text message after church that said, hey, man, God just sees your faithfulness. Or the usher that met me at the car door. You know, I'm thinking if I was a visitor for the first time in the church, what am I going to remember? So I came, it'll be 10 years this August that I've been here and it was during camp meeting. I don't remember what camp meeting was about that year, but I remember in December is when I really probably started feeling like this was my family. And you know why? Because Miss Pam, you know, a lot of people are new, but Miss Pam's one on home to be with the Lord. She gave me, her and her daughter gave me a Christmas card that year in December. And she was the first person in this church that really, I mean, I don't want to say like made me feel welcome. I was here from August to December, but like I felt like family. You know, so like I said, I don't remember about August of what was being preached, but I can remember the way she made me feel and included me. You know, just the stranger that becomes family. 
So, you know, um, making our homes, you know, warm and inviting and, and doing all the things that you do, that's all great. But Romans 12, 20 says that if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you'll reap, heap coals of fire on his head. Now, come on, we've all read that verse before and smiled, okay? <laughs> like, you're just sitting there and you're like, mm-hmm, killing him with kindness. But what that was, what that means, Pastor and I were talking about this before he came out this, this evening, it's talking about breaking down the barriers. When you're reaping coals on their head, whatever barriers, barriers are up, I'm coming and I'm dumping them, and they're melting away whatever's, the, whatever's keeping you to keep going to that next step. And you're doing this just by getting to know, getting to be around people and just chiseling away at that stuff. Just getting around and just, you know, making them more, feel more invited and, and more well, creating an atmosphere just for the Lord to come in and just do what he does. You just be a vessel. You just come in and just do what he's already called you to do. Give him something to drink and let him just continue to, to work. It's in the atmosphere of hospitality that uh, communities are built. You know, people are just coming together. And as people come together, then you continue to, you know, go from that stranger to family and continue to impact the kingdom. Um, Luke 19, I, you can write this down. We don't have to really go there for the sake of time, but uh, Luke 19, verses 1 through 10, is the story of Zacchaeus. And Jesus is coming to town and Zacchaeus really doesn't know him, so he goes and he climbs up the tree. You guys know the story. And Jesus comes by and he says, Zacchaeus, come down for, I'm coming to your house today. So, you know, okay. And he comes and salva- Jesus at the end of the story says, Zacchaeus, salvation's coming to your house today. So I started thinking about that, that in hospitality, someone who was by the world standard wasn't a good person. He was a tax collector in his day still opened up his home for the Lord to come in. And because he used his home as a tool. I don't know what maybe Zacchaeus's what his um, motive was to letting Jesus come in, you know, just whatever, this dude wants to come to my house and let him in. But the Lord had a motive. Salvation comes, and you see Zacchaeus going out and returning and, and impacting the kingdom with the riches that he had, you know, gained throughout the years. So that's what I wrote. Hospitality will bring blessing to your own home. Because we've already, it's a tool. It's a tool in the kingdom that he's given to you, and he says, impact. So I told Pastor, I said, you know, I'm glad that I can get up here and talk for a few minutes because I know he'll get up and add some closing stuff. Um, try to give, you know, worth, worth the price of admission. If you start sp- smelling the popcorn, you know, Donald locked the door back there or something. But so here's a couple points. How can I be hospitable? Number one, intimacy with God. That's where it starts first. Okay, if I can't be hospitable to the Holy Spirit and let him come into my life and shape me and mold me into who he wants me to be, how can I ever be hospitable to people? Okay? I mean, people, it requires some you know, some work to prepare the home, prepare the food, just to love on people sometimes. We, we've talked about that. You, you get people, you're going to get the stuff that comes with them. So intimacy with the Lord's number one. All, all he's saying is just show up. You know, just show up to the time of prayer, going to your, going to your work in the morning. I'm thankful. I have a 30-minute drive to work in the mornings, and I love it because that's my time of, of just prayer with the Lord. Just show up. Number two is community with insiders. All right? Join in. Community. This is a community of of believers. We're a community. We're a family. A lot of us are like-minded people. All right? And so in order to have influence, the greater the community, the greater the influence. Okay? So that's why, why we're able to have, what, 12, 15 journey groups about? 10, 
still, larger number, influence, influence. Each group is able to invite other people who may never come here, may, may not, you know, but there's influence because of a community of people. And then number three is influence with outsiders. So you have community with insiders and then influence with outsiders. That's, this is the part where you're inviting, you know, the friend from school or the guy from work that probably really doesn't want to come to church yet, but is just at the point where we're having some hot dogs and a couple of us are just going to hang around and, I don't know, just sit on the back porch and have a bonfire or something this evening. He brings his family over and just sees a community of people. This is what it's about. People doing life with each other. People encouraging one another. Okay, I like this. And start coming around more. And so influence with outsiders is just being real. You know, life's not always a bed of roses and sunshine. And that's what people are, are, are attracted to. People are attracted to just the the realness of, of one another saying, you know, I go to church, but this is happening in life. I go to church, Jesus is Lord, but today was just a bad day for X, Y, and Z reasons. You know, and it breaks down those walls where people can open up and there's protection in homes. Sometimes people don't want to get up here and, and share for whatever reasons, but they'll open up in your home. You know, because it's a safe place, creating an atmosphere. Once again, creating an atmosphere for Holy Spirit to come in. If you can get him in, let him work. So, you know, we say the way we can love God is by loving others. I love God better. I love God better by loving one others. Okay? Um, you know, loving your neighbor. That's what he says. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who's my neighbor? The person I like, the person I don't like, the stranger, the enemy. That's what that word's talking about. And just the one in front of you. Heidi Baker says that. She says, just love the one in front of you. You know, I got checked by the Lord on this the other day. Just from work, we had, a, we had two new people. And one, one person I know really well when she started working and so throughout the day, it was easier for me to have a conversation with this person all day because I know her. But then the other person, I was leaving work, and the Lord just kind of checked me on it. And I went, okay, thank you, sir, you know, because I, it's not like I, I didn't pay attention to her at all, but just my conversation, I could have I been more open in conversation of, you know, helping her feel more welcoming. And the Lord just said, he said, what about loving the one you said in front? I already know the other person, but my influence with the, the one I didn't know, does that make sense? So how can we be hospitable? How can we tie all this to us? And like I said, we do this really well in this church. I just wanted to encourage you guys in it of hospitality isn't just coming over with your best friend and throwing a hot dog on the grill. So in this church, we call it our mission statement. We, we break it down into four Four places. We connect. We connect with people around us. We connect with people we know. We connect with people we don't know. We just make connections with people. Number two, we're going to grow. We're going to grow together. Okay? And if you're not growing, I'm going to come beside you and I'm going to grab your hand and we're going to grow together. All right? And that's where in growing, it's, that's the doing life with each other. You know, you fall and mess up. Well, good. Good job. Because now that you admit that you've fallen, I've admitted that I've fallen and messed up, there's something for someone else to come and work with and help you grow into whatever God's called you to be. Then we're going to serve. We're going to serve a community. This is the community with others we were talking about. And just go out and just influence and make impact. I loved it what we did back you know, in, in May with, with the community and going in different projects. And I guess what we're doing in August. Because that's just a community of people going in and just invading territory and just saying, hey, this is how we can love on people. And then finally, we're going to go. We're going to go into our homes. We're going to go into our workplaces. We're going to go wherever God sends us, and we're going to continue to make impact there. Because I promise you this, we can make greater impact in places outside of the church just because people are drawn. People are drawn to you. People are drawn to people. And so as I'm getting around people, I go, you know, we used to say, Jesus couldn't be here today, so he sent me. You know? 
wherever you go is your realm of influence. Your influence with people and at work, at school, the mom's group, whatever. All right, guys. That's all she wrote. <laughs>